Amen. Amen. Father God, we thank you for this word. We thank you, oh God, that you, oh God, will have the mic, oh God. You use me, oh God. You show up so someone can hear you and not me, oh God. And they won't see me, but they will see you. And the word of God will come forward that even will pop open that lives will be changed, transformed, yes, and converted, oh God. We thank you for deliverance. We thank, thank you for you each God. and every one that's here. We ask you to continue to bless those online. We ask yes, you to continue God. to just keep this building, oh God, in your name. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you're going to do today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 So I thank God for another opportunity to come before you. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I know that I would not be here today. And I don't take that lightly. Because so we saw what happened over the past year or so when we lost a lot of folks and God is still keeping us. So I'm grateful. Hallelujah. I'm grateful to be alive. And I used to say that lightly, but I don't say that lightly no more. I'm glad to be alive and God is not finished with me yet. I thank God for the opportunity to come before you to preach our pastor and first lady in their absence and all the training and things that they've done here with us here at Hope with the clergy. I just thank God for their teaching and all their anointing and the uh, prophetic uh, ministry and things that they have uh, poured into my life and to other lives. You know, it's a, it's a witness to see them do it to others too because it's, it lets you know that it, what you see is real. And, it, and it's, it's real, and ministry is real for them. I thank God for that realness uh, that they can get down and get dirty and still get in the pulpit and preach the word that so God gave it to them, give to us. So I thank God for all the fresh bread that I received in this place. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and um, I come to love fresh bread because of them. I thank God for them, and I thank God for our pastor elected. Our first lady in the Amen. Amen. God is doing a new thing. And I'm giving them a new song to sing. And I thank God for that. And thank God for my God's order. Of course, God, I'm not going to say that. Thank God for my God's order in the back. And all I heard you. And especially for my, my, uh, my friend, my husband, my friends. Amen. I thank God for him. And sometimes we take for granted who we have amongst us in our congregation. And I'm just so grateful for each and every one of you. And I don't take it for granted that we are brothers and sisters in Christ. And this is my brother and sister in, in the uh, bi biological family. I thank God for each and every one of you. You know, doctors, lawyers, whatever you are. You know what you are besides a Christian. And sometimes, you know, we have to call on you. And I thank God for your uh, ability to be there. For me and for my family at times when I had to, to uh, reach out to you or, or, or you had to reach out to me. I'm just grateful that we're brothers and sisters in Christ. And so today our word is coming from, I have a word from the Lord. And the word is coming from Mark, the second chapter, verse 1 to 5. Mark, the second chapter, verse 1 to 5. And it reads, a few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, people heard that he had come home. So they gathered in such a large number that there was no room left, not even the outside door. And he preached the word to them. Some men came bringing him a paralyzed man carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it and then lowering the mat the man was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Amen. The topic is move the crowd. Come on. Yes, yes, yes. I come from an era when rap first got started where we would have beatbox parties and house parties and block parties and any kind of party that we can get on the mic and try to rap. 
Amen. <laughs> and yes, I was a rapper, but I'm not going to rap for you today. <laughs> but we would get on the mic and we would battle. And one of the songs that came out back then was, How Do We Move the Crowd? by Eric B. and Rakim. And the words of the lyrics of the song that they started off with was, standing by the speaker, suddenly had this fever. Was it me or either summer madness? Because I just couldn't stand around. So I, I got closer and closer. And the closer I got, the better it sounded. My mind, my mind started to activate and the rhymes collaborated. Because when I heard the beat, I just had to make something from the top of my head. So I fell on the groove of the wax. And I said, how can I move the crowd? How can I move the crowd? In this text, we go to verse, we're going to focus on uh, verse 3 on. When Jesus was in this house, they said this was his second home. So he was there and he was doing what he did, preaching. And all the people was there and it was crowded. And these men, these four friends, took their paralyzed friend to the place where they knew that he could get healed. Yes. What is a friend? A friend is a, a, a relationship that you have with a mutual affection between people and not Facebook friends. Well, we established that yesterday when I was talking to my husband we had this conversation about Facebook. Facebook ain't your friend. It's, it's, a, it's a terminology that they use to keep people connected. It's a network, yes. It can be some of your friends, yes. It can be some of your old classmates, yes. It could be some people you don't even know, but you want to know. But it is not a mutual affection between people. Kindness, love, virtue, sympathy, empathy, honesty, loyalty, generosity, forgiveness. Mutual understanding, compassion, all a friend's characteristics that we look for and we hope for in a friend. The ability to be oneself around that one person or that group of people that would accept you for who you are. That friend that would express feelings to you and you would express feelings to them and they would see your weakness before you even can express to them or say to them exactly what it is that's bothering you. Yeah. A friend, I'm talking about a real friend. Oh, yeah. I'm talking about a friend, a mutual understanding, a compassion between two or three or four people that can connect, can get together, and cut up. Oh. You know what I mean. A friend, a real friend. In this text, we have some real friends. Everybody needs at least four good, godly friends. Good, godly friends that can carry you when you're weak. Put aside their own agenda and schedule to see about you, their friend that's in need. Then stop their life and come see about the other friend's issues and pray with them for them. And I remember that scene, and, and I've seen the movie a thousand times with, uh, with Tyler Perry about why uh, I got married or whatever the name of that movie is. Yeah. But anyway, uh, the one scene with Janet Jackson in the movie, um, and Janet Jackson's going through something with her husband, and her friends come over and she's sitting on the steps. And they're like, what can we do for you? What can we say to you? What, what is it that you need? And she said, she didn't need nothing. So they just sat for her. And sometimes we need friends to just sit with us. Yeah. Don't say nothing. But just let it happen. Because we know time is a healer in some cases. So see, these friends knew that their friend had this weakness, that he had messed up, that he had some sin in his life, and some things that happened to him to get him to this place of being paralyzed. So he knew that he needed help and that they were going to help him. So he trusted them, and they put him on a mat, and they took him down to this place. See, good godly friends go out of their way to encourage you and to give you courage to go on. Yeah. Friends that do not care about you or your handicap, but love you for who you are. Yeah. Friends with a strong, strong will to live and to live for God will build you up and build your faith too yeah. in God. Yeah. 
friends that go the extra mile without asking or, or asking for anything in return. Because, you know, there are some who will be your friend until they get what they want. Wow. And once they get that thing, whatever that, you can fill in the blank for yourself. Whatever that thing is, then they off somewhere wow. else. It might be a stimulus check. Try the You get your check. Have your check going, your money going, that going. That ain't a friend. You can't count on them when you get sick. Especially if you need them to carry you somewhere. They ain't paying for no gas money and they ain't gonna pick you up on no mat. They gone. Those are friends you don't need in your life. Some people will pretend to be godly. And I've seen it. They'll even say they believe in God. But when you talk about the God that we serve, the term the God, Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, right. the one and only God, there's one and three, and three and one. That's yeah. a trinity. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. They're not believing in that. They're not only going to go but so far in your belief. That ain't the friend you need. Because when you need to get before the Father, and you need a prayer to get through, uh -huh. you need people in your life that's going to bring you to the place. Of healing. Hallelujah. So these three friends, these four friends, they were spiritual godly friends that, that knew the Lord, that knew our Jesus, yeah. that were saved, sanctified, and Holy Ghost filled friends. They were real BFFs. Okay. See, if they can get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they couldn't get him into front of Jesus where they needed to get him. So I'm quite sure when they saw all the people at the house, they said, how can I move the crowd? Yeah. Friends that know that if you could just see Jesus, friends that know that if you could just see Jesus, then things would be all right. Then maybe you could run with us. Maybe you could walk with us again. Yeah. Maybe you couldn't have to stay in that situation you in all along. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you could yeah. just do what we do and go over on our knees and pray to the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you can move in a way that you never moved before. Yeah. But friends that know the Lord know that if you could just see Jesus, yeah. things would be all right. Yeah. Friends willing to share that their Jesus is the answer. Yes, and friends that are willing just to share their Jesus. Because yeah. there are some people who won't share their Jesus. Oh, this is my Jesus. Wow. I'm not sharing it with nobody. We can't get to the place where only we be blessed. Only our God, only my God is our God. And he wants to serve and heal and deliver everyone. So we have to have friends that are willing to share their Jesus with others. Friends that know that Jesus is the answer for all diagnosis. Paralyzing the issue for Jesus. Backache ain't an issue for Jesus. Overweight ain't an issue for Jesus. Feet being swollen ain't an issue for Jesus. The littlest things that we think of, like headaches and heartaches and all kinds of things that we feel like, oh, this diagnosis is too much for Jesus and nothing too hard for God. I'm a witness. There is nothing too hard. God can deliver. Little old me from drugs and alcohol, I know he can deliver somebody from paralyzing, being paralyzed. Thank you, God. If it's his will, his will will be done. Amen. Friends that know there is nothing too hard for Jesus will take you to another level yes. in your belief and in in show you that nothing will stop us. Uh, continue, they were made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it. Good godly friends will let the crowd stop them from their purpose and their mission. Friends that are true, godly friends get creative Come with on. their righteousness Come on. and their desperation. Come on. They will tear the roof off tear it if they need to. They will take piece by piece. Hallelujah. Rip the roof from shred to shred. Snatching one piece off at a time. I can imagine the man who was on the mat had it laid him to the side and went up on the roof and started.
started snatching the roof off of him just to get him in. I can imagine the hope and the desperation that he had that they could get that thing open. That's right. That they could get him in. That's right. Because he knew that if he got in before their God, then they was doing all this to get him in, surely, surely that they would move the crowd. Yeah. So he was desperate, they were desperate, and they did some desperate things to get him there. And four friends made an opening in the roof before Jesus digging through it and then lowering the mat. They took the man down through the hole, lying on his mat, yeah. right yeah. in front of Jesus. Yeah. 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 I know the crowd was moved by that. I was moved yeah. by that. that the presence of the Lord brings healing in itself. Yeah, yeah. So to be in front of him, there in front of him, I know that the crowd was moved by such an act. Thank you, Lord. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, son, your sins are forgiven. Yeah. Jesus saw the faith. Does Jesus see our faith in action today? What are you doing? What is your move? What is the mission that God has you on that you haven't allowed the crowd to stop you from going forward in? What have you done to bust a roof open? What roof have you opened up and lowered somebody else into? Jesus saw the five friends that got together and joined the essence of holiness then proceeded to go to see Jesus, applying the word of God to their lives. Blessed assurance and hope and knowing. Jesus saw their bold actions, the uh, devotion, the loyalty, the faithfulness, the consistency, and the commitment to God. He saw what they had done. Does God see that in you? Does he see how you are devoted, not only to him, but to the ones around you? I remember once I heard this sermon that convicted me. And I, I believe I was in uh, Somerset Christian College at that time. One of the professors got up and said, who's going to a church and you're passing people along the way on the corners and, and people are in despair and you're going dressed up into the place of holiness and walking over people as you get there yes. that need to know the Lord Jesus oh, Christ. Yes. Who are you forsaking along your way to the church of God? Right. Dressed up in your suits and your hats and all wow. these things. Yes. Who are you? Wow. And that thing hit me. At that time I wasn't here at Hope Church, but I was in my other church. And I remember us driving to church and seeing people on the corners where God had delivered me from. I remember seeing people waiting for the liquor store to open up where God had delivered me from. I remember seeing people hustling in early in the morning, not being had went to sleep at all most of the time. I remember seeing those people crawling back into their doorsteps and just coming from the club. Yes, I remember. That was me he was talking to. I remember. And when I remember, God saw him laid it on my heart. Tell somebody about what I did for you. That's the mission. Tell somebody what God did for you, what others have done for you. Don't just let it go in vain. So Jesus saw in the midst of their obedience, the crowd did not stop them but they moved the crowd. They presented their faith to Jesus with their creativity, their authenticity, and originality. They moved the crowd, and they moved God. Yeah. See, move is not always what we think move is. Move is not just change and attempt and shift and progress. Shift is cause. When you cause something, you provoke it. You persuade it, you encourage it, you influence, and you suggest to the crowd that if you truly believe in what Jesus is preaching, 
future, then you will exercise your faith and do something. Just do it. Thanks. Just do it. As our pastor let preach last week, just do it. When God lays it on your heart, don't let it be just laid on your heart to lay in it. When something's placed in your spirit, don't just let it be placed in your spirit. Do it. Let it move. Let the spirit move you. Allow God to use you in a way that others are blessed. That others, not only the people that you're blessing, but people around will know that there had to be God. Yes. So that God will get the glory in all that we say and do. So many people are dying and, and dying in need of help. They may not be paralyzed, but they be in a paralyzed situation. Yeah. There have been some traumatic events that have occurred recently. Incidents that cause physical, emotional, and spiritual, and also psychological harm. The person experiencing the distress and the, the events may feel threatened, anxious, and frightened as a result. There are tests that can be taken that allow you to examine yourself to see if you too have been affected. Do you have feelings of fear, grief, depression? Are you nauseous, dizzy? Are you having changes in your appetite and sleep patterns? Are you withdrawing from daily activities? Three stages of trauma. Their main types are acute, chronic, and complex. What level are you on? Seek help while help can be found. You don't always have to uh, go to a place where you don't feel comfortable. We have Christian LCSW right here that can help you to be healed from the situations that are paralyzing you today. See God's direction to be a good, godly friend and get them in front of Jesus. This story is pushes about encouraging friends, putting our faith into action, and being led to forgiveness of sins and healing. Four friends put aside their differences and sought after the answer, which was Jesus, and there's something waiting for us. There's someone waiting for us to do the same. Some people will doubt us just as they doubted Jesus. No. It doesn't have to look, they don't have to look far to see where they doubted him. Because in verse 6, it goes on to say, Now some teachers of the Lord were sitting there thinking to themselves, Why does this fellow talk like this? He's blaspheming. Who can forget sins for God alone? Immediately Jesus knew what they were saying in their spirit. They didn't even have to say it, but he knew what they were thinking. That this must be something, right? For Jesus to already be reading them. Because immediately Jesus knew in his spirit that this was what they were thinking in their hearts and, and he had said to them, why are you thinking these things? So I said to you today, why are you thinking like that? Because just as they moved the crowd and did what they did, you can too. God is not a respecter of person. You can do the same thing. God is using each one of us in his own way. There's nobody greater than, than God. Yes. But God can use us in a great and mighty way. Yes. The question is, are you willing to allow God to do yes. you? Why are you thinking the way that you think? Which is easier to say to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up and take your mat and walk? But I want you to know that the Son of Man was a, has authority on earth to forgive sin. Yes. So he said to the man, I tell you, Get up, take your mat, and go home. So the man who they brought on the mat, he got up, took his mat, and walked out in full view of them all. He walked through the crowd. He walked through the crowd, and this amazed everyone, and they praised God, saying, we have never seen anything like this before. Jesus moved the crowd through healing of this man. Not only healing him of his sins, forgiving him of his sins, but healing him physically of his ailment. Sometimes we don't get healed on this side. 
God will heal us on the other side. But we have to know that healing can happen. God can heal us. And he can use some of us even to do that. All, Ill all illness is not unto death. It is for God to get the glory. In case we need examples of what God did and how this happened, Jesus and Lazarus is an example. Yeah. That Lazarus was, was dead. Jesus wept when he got to where Lazarus was put in a grave and everything. He said Lazarus wasn't really going to be dead. He told his friends that before he got there. But he went anyway and he got there. Lazarus was not ill unto death but so that God gets the glory. Yeah. And Lazarus came out of there. And God got the glory. Got the How can we move the crowd? Come on. Come on. That's my question. How can we move the crowd like that? That God get the glory. Right. Yeah. Right yeah. Jesus said, you my friends, if you do what I command you, in John 15, he tells us that. So we have to be an example of this friendship between us and God and us and others that they would know him in a way that would move the crowd. Yes. I like this relationship or the friendship between David and Jonathan. Because Jonathan's father didn't like David. Y'all know the story, right? But Jonathan and David was friends anyway. A lot of us have those kind of friendships, you know. You like them, but the in-laws don't like you, so I don't have that issue though, thank God. Now, anyway. <laughs> it's been 25 years, but we thank God for that. You know? My Lord. But sometimes we get in relationships with friends, and our friends is not friends, but they friends, so we only friends with them. So we can't be friends with the other ones because they're not friends with us. And you don't drama. No more drama. So David and Jonathan had a strange relationship because Jonathan's father was who? Saul. And Saul wanted to kill David. But that's even to another extreme. But he still was, he still was David's friend. He still looked out for David. He came and found David when David was hiding from his father, remember? Yeah. In the Old Testament, this is Bible study uh, Come on, right uh, 101 uh, Come on. Bible moment. You yeah. teach it. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, not only did he find him and he was his friend at that time, he found him, uh, he found his son after Jonathan had died and yeah. Saul had died. David went after to find that one that we restore not Jonathan's inheritance, but Saul's inheritance, which took me for a loop because David went to find an inheritance for Saul, who was the one who did not accept him but wanted to kill him. And he had an opportunity to kill him, but he did not because he knew order, the order of God. And he was obey obeying God's order. And so David, went after to find Jonathan's son, Mephibosheth. I can never say that. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Who could not walk because he had been dropped by the maid. And then hauling and running off, she dropped him. And so he was in a place where he was handicapped. So David took him in, moved him into his home, and he raised him up at the king's table. This is an example of Jesus and how Jesus would move the crowd. Because studies have found that strong support to prove a person's prospect for good health and longevity. At any age, at any handicap, at any disability or any type of diagnosis, if you have strong support and good friends in your life, it will help you to get through what you're going yes. through. Yes. So everybody needs at least four good, godly friends. Yes. 
good godly friends that will carry us when we're weak, that will go out of their way for us and encourage us to give us courage. And we need spiritual friends that know Jesus, that are saved, sanctified, and Holy Ghost filled. Ones that are, are, are with you no matter what. That would uh, like to be one of your BFS, but only meet the criteria that you have already established. I remember um, growing up, your parents would always say, be careful who you choose as your friend. That's right. And if you get a good friend, be a good friend. Yes. If you are married, your friend should be your husband. You should be friends before you get married, really. And so some of the things that we've learned growing up, now as adults, God is asking us to move the crowd. Do what he has called us already to do. That we won't be living in vain, but we will be living for him and helping to serve. And not only serve ourselves in the kingdom, but serve him and others. Yeah. That others will be put before the Lord Jesus Christ and be healed. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Saints, when we do good works, 
it's not so that we should be considered great or that we should be the ones to get the, the praise and the honor, but it's for our Father in heaven. And so if we're going to move the crowd, we need to understand that we're moving the crowd in order that God would be glorified, that he would get praise, that he would get honor. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Rev, for that word. God bless you. So I want to just uh, say thank you to our brother Nation, Hornsby, uh, for facilitating the uh, candid COVID-19 conversations. Thank you to your colleagues. It was infor informative and very much beneficial. We certainly needed to hear it. If you were unable to view it, it is on the District Union number one of Central Jersey's Facebook page, as well as Hope Church's Facebook page. Uh, and lastly, I believe it's on the district's YouTube channel. Um, so if, again, you were unable to attend uh, last Wednesday at 7.30, uh, please go and check it out. It is, it is, it is rich with information. Um, it, and, and if there are questions that you still have, we have uh, ways of getting information uh, to you. Amen? So thank you again, Brother Nation, for, for your service uh, to God and kingdom. God bless you. Um, secondly, I want to say thank you to each and every one of you who uh, provided uh, a gift to myself and my wife. Uh, that was so unexpected and, and uh, so, so, so very nice of you at Pastor's suggestion. So I just publicly wanted to thank each one of you that that gave, uh, even those that had a heart to give. We, my wife and I certainly appreciate you and thank you, and it's not lost on any one of you. So God bless you for that. Amen? Um, amen. Um, thirdly, uh, if you were on the COVID-19 vaccination list, you should have received by now an email or a text message with instructions on registering for your appointment. Uh, the appointment date and time are pretty standard. I believe it's this week, um, and, and, and times are staggered, so you have the ability to choose. Actually, you have the ability to choose the time and the location. So I said at first it was only Robert Wood in New Brunswick, but we do have other sites that may be more convenient to you. Um, so please, ma'am, please, sir, whoever uh, was on that list, uh, just look out for it and um, follow the guidelines uh, as this has been given. Amen? Amen. Uh, let's not forget to give God his tithe and your offering. The boxes are here. Uh, we can give on the website and we can give through Zell. Uh, continue to log on for Thursday night Bible study uh, at 7 p.m. Thank you for those that are doing that. Uh, continue to encourage those who have yet to come on board. God is speaking. God is helping us to grow uh, spiritually through his word. Um, so it kind of, everything really, it's, it's not coincidental. It really isn't. The, the, the teaching on Thursday night uh, flows, flows very much with the preaching that happened on Sunday morning. So, you know, and, and we don't talk to each other. It's not like we call each other up and say, hey, what are you preaching? Hey, what are you teaching? It's just, that's the spirit of God. That's what happens when we allow the Spirit to do what the Spirit does, to teach us, to instruct us, to lead us, and to guide us. So saints, don't forsake that. Come on and be a part. Again, thank you for those that are doing that, and I'm encouraging those who haven't yet, come on and get on board, because it is rich, it is encouraging, it is, it is powerful uh, for the building and advancement of God's kingdom. And the last thing I want to say is, uh, again, reach out and connect with your community, reach out and touch one of your brothers and sisters that you may not have uh, talked to in a minute, check on those who are sick and infirm. Just let's be the body of Christ. We are people maturing in the love of Jesus, which means that we just don't keep it to ourselves. We don't hoard it for ourselves, but we allow it to flow through us and to us. So we, we're not left out. We get love too, but we want to make sure that we are really embodying the love that Jesus dispensed and displayed to us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.